Oh, yes. Need to get up there, Martin. Need to get up there. Guys, we're back at the same location I was a week ago. I don't know what video you'll watch it, but it's probably about two weeks after you watch that one. And uh, I'm back at Crow Mill because it snowed and uh, Crow Mill itself is looking absolutely stunning. Now I've come pretty much in the same spot as what I were last time, but this part of the bank here has no snow on it or very little and it looks extremely messy. I'm with Martin today. Martin's stopped down there and he's probably done the right thing, but I still think it's an image from here. But we cut the tree out and I think I'm gonna move over there because this other part of the hill it's quite snowy. The only other thing is we've got here for sunrise and I've actually pasted up here for sunrise but I've missed the best of the light, I think, unless it comes back. Uh, but that don't look promising either. So I might have made a massive mistake. But the thing is, you never know until you get here. So what I'm going to do is, while there's a little bit of colour in the sky behind, I'm just going to move over and get a more intimate shot and totally get rid of this tree on the left hand side and just get crow mill running through. You get, get that and then we'll see what the light does. And you're probably thinking, what's he doing with his tripod down there? Well I've got to be honest with you, it's because the tripod is absolutely froze <laughs> and I can't get the legs out anymore. <laughs> so we're just getting the the tree in the, the bottom, right in the bottom corner. But I'll probably edit that out or even crop it out. But the reason why I've gone to that composition is because we've got a tree in the bottom here, just filling the frame up. And then we've got a chrome mill with this beautiful light behind. And this where it might work better. Uh, was a portrait image. I can get more of that foreground in. Oh, crow mill looks delicious. <laughs> oh, it is. Uh, crow mill, park house hill, looks delicious, covered in snow, or pretty much covered in snow. It's minus, about minus, it's predicted minus 11. I don't think it's minus 11, but it could be about minus eight. And I was absolutely freezing. But as I've paced it up here, I'm sweating like a pig. What I've got to watch is I don't go cold and cold quick, but I've got uh, another coat to stick on if I need that. That's not a problem. Oh, that, that light there looks fantastic. Well, what I might need is the longer lens. I might need the long lens. So I'll come over, grab you. We'll move over there and uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at. And what I really want to get is that, that's it. Dominant flank of Park House looks unbelievable. Looks like I'm in the Alps, to be honest. Bracketing the shot to get that detail out. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to get the seating mat out and have a sit down. <laughs> so that's the scene I'm looking at. I'm sitting down on my mat, but that, that's. That's the image I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get sort of that part of the shot there. We're just focusing on the mountain now. There we go. And uh, that looks beautiful. That, that lovely pink sky. I think I'm going to just change, change that composition there. I might even pano it actually, but do a vertical pano. Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to do a vertical panel. I'm in at about 100 mil. 70 mil weren't quite enough. And then what I'm going to do oh, is actually come a bit wider then and see if we can get more of this. I like the leading line as it runs through, which is actually the pathway as it runs in, into the valley, then back up over the top. And I'm hoping next, when if the sun does actually break through, it's, it will do at some point, I'm sure it will, uh, that it casts a bit of 
a light on this foreground and we might even get a little it looks like there's a little bit of haze developing i don't know if you can see it but in that just move you around but in that that valley there well, you can see it, you can just see the slightest bit of haze just there. So that's what we want, we want a bit of atmosphere to roll in. But I've actually, the best of the light was 10 minutes before I actually got here. I'm hoping that Martin's captured it, he probably has. Let's hope so. If he has, he's, got, he's probably got an absolute banger. Okay, I need to move over a little bit. Still a little bit more because I'm still catching this, this tree just, and if I move over, 10 yards <coughs> um, because chrome mill sort of bends from um, slightly from right to left it's going out of the image so if I move over there it will, it will look it should look better or I go down a little bit even that might work let me move over a bit and see if I can get that line as it follows through let's do that well that's a nice seat Woo against the bag come on so <laughs> I've moved and it is better definitely better at the moment I think if this blanket of cloud moves as quick as what it looks as looks as if it's moving we could be in luck but what I do like is I do like the color of the sky at the moment because we've got a little strip of orange light, a little strip, but then that nice blue, but it contrasts nice with that blue with a white snowy hill. What I'm looking for, why I'm, I'm waiting to see if the light does change, it's definitely going to change, definitely going to change. But what I'm looking for is, is little intimate details. There's a little lone tree just down here that I might try and capture. Uh, it's anything of any interest that's not part, because sometimes you can focus too much on that main subject when actually the best image is someone else. And it's obvious that the hill is, is superb, it's beautiful, it's so dramatic, it looks fantastic with this snow. But it still makes me wonder, there's, there's, there's definitely other images, there's some nice trees dotted here and there, like I say, that, there's a lone tree down here, which I might get with a long lens. And even the road and things like that, so while I'm waiting, I will be scanning around to see what else there is. There's obviously the, there's the little farm building on the other side here with the red door on. That might work with the snow around it. Oh, so I've set the drone up and I've got a couple of images. One I'm quite looking forward to seeing. What's happened is obviously the snow's melted one side of the mountain, not the other. So we've got a, a super divide in the mountain. 
of this like two seasons, which is really what it is. We've got the winter one side and the spring the other. Oh, what a beautiful morning, absolutely stunning morning. We've had just starting to get that sun that's warming you up, warming the body up. Uh, got the big gloves on as well, so that's how cold it was. Got the big gloves on. Yeah, so probably I think, photography-wise, I, I honestly think my best shot may be a drone image. I'm not 100% sure, but I think I've got some nice shots. It's one of them places, it, if you're going to take a photo of Crow Mill, it's going to be a nice shot. But with this snow and everything, it just makes it a little bit better. We've on, on Crow Mill, Crow Mill is messy. It, we've just done grass, so it, look, it does, this looks messy, so we've tried to chop that out. So this is why we're not getting this iconic tree that's just below us. And then we've concentrated on, there's a tree behind here that's casting a nice shadow but it, the wall that comes up is frustrating to, in the image, not sure if it works or not. So we've tried one or two compositions. The one I'm really looking forward to looking at is the one of the drone shot I've got of Crow Mill. And we have got that divide. We've got, we've got spring on the left and we've got winter on the right. And it, it, that contrast looks fantastic. And I think the light was quite good as well at the time, so that might work as well. But just being here on a zone on a Saturday at Crow Mill in the snow. What's going on, guys? Where are you all? You should be here. I, and I, I'm not kidding, I'm getting so comfortable now. I think I could stop here all day. If I had, if I had a bit of dinner here, up here, pine chips. <laughs> but if I, no, if I had a dinner up here, I could easily stop here all day. That warmth is beautiful. That sun, that warmth of the sun. We, we, we got up at, well I got up at half past three, set off at four, got here for, uh, what time did we get here? Can't remember now, half six-ish I think, no, no, got here for six and 
I, I definitely miss the best of the light sunrise. Hopefully Martin's got a nice image, like I said earlier. The light was beautiful. But I wanted, I wanted to get up here and get just beyond to, up, to look down from here. And I, miss, I did miss the best of the light, there's no doubt about it, I missed the best of the light. But it's still beautiful. It, it, up here it feels, I've got this snowy background here, but it, I feel as if it's really a lovely spring morning. That's what it feels like. How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me, a little bit scared of heights. Why does the rain always keep on pouring down when it's grey outside? Makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. Ooh, I wonder. How come the trees get undressed when it's cold? And don't they miss the leaves they left behind? Could it be to make the ground shine like cold until winter comes? Until winter comes? Until winter comes? It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. off Crow Mill and we're walking down and we spotted this beautiful patterns and texture in the snow and it's where the winds caught it and it's where it started to just sort of drift away over the mountain. The patterns are absolutely stunning and I was struggling to actually see the back of my camera and Martin says put it in day mode. This is a sunny day mode. I says, what are you on about? It's a sunny day mode. Sony A7R 3 Bright day. Put it in sunny day mode. <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> um, I can actually see what I'm actually taking a photo of, which is amazing. Which is always good when you're trying to take a photo. <laughs> um, it saves me trying to bend down, looking through the viewfinder in awkward positions. Oh... But this scene looks like we're actually on a mountain top in the Alps with the Matterhorn in the background. That's what it looks like. It, it really is phenomenal. So I'm getting some images of this, trying to work it. We've been here 20 minutes already, 20 minutes, half an hour, let's say. And I might spend another 20 minutes, half hour here trying to get the best out of this because hopefully we'll never ever see this again. We'll never ever see this pattern in this snow ever again that's leading you up towards Park House Hill. Well I've tried, tried, just hold on one moment, missing something here. Okay, take two. So I've tried to capture these beautiful patterns in the snow. We've probably been here three quarters of an hour, if not a little bit longer. <laughs> They're absolutely stunning because we've got a park house behind that really does look like we're on the top of some fantastic mountain range. And we're in the Peak District. It's beautiful, love the patterns. I'll probably do a square crop on one or two of them. I think will work nice, but until I get back, I don't know. I think the, the portrait will 
probably work better than the landscape because it leads your line in, leads your eye into the image. And there's one image I particularly like by looking at it, and it's first I was struggling because we'd got the angle of this pattern that was running out. Then I realised that the the ridge of this this first mountain runs out, and then Park House runs out all in the same angle. So I think it works because it's like a layered effect that runs out from bottom right to top left. Very nice indeed. The light is, it's not super harsh, but it's harsh enough to create some lovely shadows as well. It's, it's a, like a big soft box at the minute. It's, it is stunningly beautiful. We've got some lovely patterns here as well. I've just noticed I've come over here to do the vlog. <laughs> We've got some beautiful patterns here. So yeah, um, that's what I've done. That's my thoughts. And I uh, hope you enjoy this next set of images. Okay, another great day in the Peak District at Crow Mill and Park House Hill. I've had an absolutely fantastic time with Martin. It's been brilliant. I hope you've enjoyed it too. I think we've got some fantastic images. Thanks for watching. Um, please subscribe and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Don't go! Don't go!